So in this class, we will see what the file class provides in the Java I.O. package. In Java, there is a class called the file class which is in the Java I.O. package. This class is used to represent and manipulate file paths and do some file system operation. This The file object is immutable. Like the string class which is immutable, the file object is also immutable. So once it has been created, you cannot modify what it represents. So if you create a file object with a certain path, it will always point to the same path. You cannot make it point to another path. The important thing to note is the file class is not used to read or write to a file on disk. It is only used for representing and manipulating file paths. The file object, you can create it with an absolute path or a relative path. There are two kinds of methods in the file class. The first type of methods are like query methods which just query what's on the disk and the second type of methods are file system modification methods. So examples of query methods are can read. Ca can you read from a file or not which exists on disk? Can you write to the file or not? Exists checks whether the file exists or not. Is directory checks whether the file that you the file path that you are using does it represent a directory or does it represent a file? Then there are methods like get absolute path, last modified, when was the file last modified, the length of the file, list all the files in a directory, list the root of the directory and so on. And then there are modification methods like creating a new file, deleting a file, making a directory, rename a file, set last modified time and so on. Paths are of three types. You can have like relative paths, absolute paths and canonical paths. So there are three methods in the file class called get path, get absolute path and get canonical path. Get path is a path that the file object was first created with. It may or may not be a relative path. The absolute path, the get absolute path method, it gets a path string after resolving it against the current directory if it's relative resulting in a fully fully qualified path. So it will resolve all relative path names in the string that you pass and give you the absolute path. And get canonical path will get the path string after resolving relative paths which include dot and dot dot. Dot is the current directory and dot dot is a parent directory. And if there are any symbolic links which lead to that path. So it will resolve both relative paths and symbolic links to return an absolute path. The get absolute path, it gives you an absolute path to the file whereas the get canonical path gives you, gives you the unique absolute path to the file. The important thing to notice, there are many absolute paths to a file but there is only one canonical path which is also an absolute path to the file. So a canonical path is like a unique absolute path to the file. And in Java, Different platforms use different characters for directory separators. For example, on Windows, you, we use backslash and Unix, we use forward slash. So Java uses the system property called file.separator. And that file.separator, the JVM will automatically set it to the correct, correct, correct character based on the system that it is running on. So on Unix it will set it to forward slash and on Windows it will set it to backslash. So now let's look at an example program which uses the file class. So here I have a file called demo file. What this does is it will pass, it will take the command line arguments and the way you use this is you run this demo file and then you give a path or a file or a directory and then you give a command whether you want to create that or do you want to remove delete it. So if you want to create it you give some file path and say create. If you want to remove the file you give the file path and say delete. 
So let me just run this program without any arguments. And if I run it without any arguments, it will show you show me the different usages that are possible. Okay. So now let me create a file. And say I want to create this file. So you say file name and say create. Apply and then run. So now it says successfully created the file. So let's go and check in the file system whether the file is there or not. So in C colon temp, I see the foo.txt. It's an empty file because I'm just creating that file. So it is zero bytes. Now let's go back and try to create the file again. So I just run the program again. And now it says the file C colon temp foo.txt already exists. Because in the create method, what I do is I check if the file exists or not. The file does not exist, then I try to create the file. If the file already exists, it will go into the else block and say file already exists. And then while creating the file, if there are any IO exceptions, I catch that exception and I print unable to create the file. Okay. Now that the file is created, let's try to delete the file. So to delete the file, what I do is in the arguments, I pass delete. Say apply and then run. And now it says successfully removed the file. So let's go and check in the file system. And then we'll see that in C colon temp, that file foo.txt doesn't exist anymore. Let's try to delete the file again. And now it says no such file or directory because you already deleted the file. So what happens in delete is I have done all those checks. I first check whether the file exists. This is like a query operation. I told you the file class has two types of methods, right? Query methods and modification methods. So this is a query method. And then I check if the file doesn't exist the file doesn't exist then what I do is I print a message saying no such file or directory the file exists then I check if the file is a directory containing some files more than zero if it is a directory containing files more than zero then you cannot remove a directory with the delete command you can only delete a directory con which does not contain anything and then finally, when I do a delete on that file object, I check whether I'm able to delete or not. If I'm able to de delete it, I say successfully remove the file. Otherwise, I say come, could not remove the file. And what I do is, when I first pass these arguments, the first argument is a file that I want to create or remove. And the second argument is the command that I want to run on it, whether I want to create it or whether I want to remove it. If the command is create, I run the create method. And if the command is delete, I run the delete method. And if the command is neither of these two, I just show the usage and exit. So try running this program and try to understand how the file methods work.